Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. So today I want to show you a technique that I absolutely love using heat embossing. Um, what you're going to need is some colours to blend in your background and these need to be a water-based ink. We need a stamp and all your tools for heat embossing. So you'll need a stamp platform, you'll need some clear embossing powder, you'll need some clear embossing ink as well. I've got an anti-static bag just to help me along and some water and then of course some towel to lift up that water in a little while. So let's get started first of all with ink blending. So we need to create our background and this always looks best if it's got a few different colours in it. So I'm going to choose a teal, a green and let's go with this blue as well. Um, might change colour, might add in even dark blue too. So you can use as many colours as you like. I'll start with the darker colours and just work in patches around the paper. So there's all the ink blending done and that's a little bit patchy at the moment but it doesn't matter for this technique. I could blend that so it's even smoother if I wanted to um, but for the sake of this video I'm going to leave it like that and I'm just going to use my heat tool quickly to dry the ink off as much as possible. So now that's completely dry we can do the next stage of this technique and you'll want a large stamp. Now this stamp is ideal if it's got quite a lot of detail to stamp. If it's got fine detail the effect won't show up quite as much. So I'm going to use my Texture Stitch in Time Lace Background. This is an A6 stamp so it's going to fit really well on this paper. I've added to the paper already my uh, anti-static bag, so I've just gone over the entire surface, tapping and swiping that, making sure that I've got no, no sort of inky fingerprints on there or anything like that. So now peeling my stamp off from between the two sheets, I'm going to place this down onto my paper, and it's a good idea if you have your paper a little bit larger than your stamp, just so you can use your magnets to hold it down if need be. I'm going to lift this up carefully with the stamp platform and I'm going to put a clear ink all over the stamp and then onto the inked background. So folding that over and press that down. So this is a clear ink and it does need to be clear uh, and you also need to use a clear embossing powder. So carefully peel that off because the clear ink is super sticky, it can take a little while to peel off. But let's put that clear powder on now. And hopefully if your background was nice and uh, dry, you won't have any issues with this powder sticking where it should and not where it shouldn't. There we go, perfect. So just sometimes a flick from behind can just remove any excess. Now popping that to the side, I'll tip that back in there in a moment and I'm just going to heat set this powder now. It's really important that you ensure every part of that powder is melted, but I did use a clear ink and a clear powder so you can only just see it if you hold it in the right light. So let's now pick up this detail a lot more, bringing in a protective sheet and that has cooled already. Just like I say, make sure that it's fully melted otherwise you'll have gaps in your embossing. And I'm going to spritz over the paper with some water. Now the reason I've done this is because the inks we used at the beginning are water-based. So this way, this water is going to react with the ink that's on the show. Not all of the ink though, because the heat embossing that we've put down is going to resist some of this water. So just letting that sit for a moment, making sure that there's water over the entire piece. And then I'm just going to lay some towel over the top and lift up as much of that dampness as possible. There we go. So picking up some of the colour and you can keep repeating this as well if you want to and more and more you'll be able to see the gorgeous floral watercolour effect coming through from underneath. So I'll do it once more, just letting that sit, particularly you can see the darker colours are holding more. And then again lifting this off. There we 
go. So now I'm just going to take my heat tool and I'm just going to dry the rest of that off because the paper or cardstock will lighten a little bit more once it's dry. So there's the finished technique. You can really see that clear or watercolour effect embossing that we did with the clear powder and the clear ink holding on to the watercolour effect and then in the background you've got the paler version of the watercolour or the water blending ink blending in the background there so this can now make a really pretty card background